Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to your 7 p.m. Thursday night show called Bonga Dada Bonga. Bonga Dada Bonga. Bonga Dada Bonga. Who is this lady making all of this noise? This is Queen Mother, the Nuno the First of Ghana, also known as Professor Dr. Ella Dashanaba King. And I'll be introducing you to our host in just a moment. I just wanted to start out by saying hello to you. We do have a great show planned for you tonight, but guess what? Sometimes Murphy raises its head. Murphy has raised its head tonight. So we've gotten a few calls from our mm -hmm. show guests saying, A, they're in traffic and on the way, or B, they will be here soon, or C, Oh, we may not make it till 7.30 or 8 o'clock. But nevertheless, the show will go on. Why? Because we have people who know how to make shows go on. Welcome, Sheila. Hello, Sheila hello, is John. our... Hello, and Sheila hello. is our host for this evening. And we will be doing pretty well tonight. You know, one thing I've learned about being uh, in live broadcasting, you can't control the weather, you can't control the internet, and sometimes you can't even control your bladder. <gasps> oh, did she say that? Absolutely. So I have to make certain that I make a couple of stops before we get ready for the show. But yeah. we are here live and in living color on Bonga, Dada Bonga, again, I am Dashanaba King, and uh, I want to give our host a chance to speak with you. Sheila? Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be here again. Um, this is my second week with Bonga, Dada Bonga, and it is a space where we get to speak to aspirants, women just like ourselves, women who've been through it, women who said enough already. I want mm -hmm. better reports and I'm ready to represent. Um, yes. It's been full of learning and mm. such an exciting place to be because, you know, as a Kenyan woman, I look at politicians and I feel like they're over there. But in these <laughs> conversations, they're not over there. They're yes. just like you and me. And we get to ask them these questions and we get to listen to where they're coming from and most importantly, question them about where they're going. So Asante mm -hmm. Sana and I'm looking forward to the conversations that are going to unfold today. Yes, we are looking forward to the conversations that are going to unfold today. And time will tell exactly what those conversations will be. I'm sure you've heard the story of how uh, Bonga Dada Bonga uh, was born, came into existence, mm -hmm. or the genesis, as we like to say. But for those of you who are tuning in tonight, for the first time, let me tell you who we are. So again, I am Queen Mother, I am Dasha Naba King, the host of a show called Queen Mother Speaks. And in the month of March, doing Women's History Month, where the theme for Women's History Month was break the bias, we invited women from various countries to come on the show doing Women's History Month and talk about what biases either they personally were experiencing or people they knew were experiencing. And it was all about the challenge, breaking the bias that women were facing. We're doing that five weeks, I believe, in March, where we had the queen, the, um, the, uh, the, the program talking about Women's History Month. We did have women from Kenya also to be on the show. In fact, we had a panel coming in from Kenya. And what many of the women spoke about was what happens in Kenya during an election. And um, even though, you know, into week four, into week five, the conversation was still hot and heavy about uh, elections in Kenya. Then the month of March ended and we went into another chain of thought. However, the calls as well as the messages about what are we gonna do about women in Kenya during the election coming up in August. So I'm like, well, I don't know. I'm a foreigner here in this beautiful land of paradise on earth. And so when the question kept coming, 
I did what I normally do and also what you probably do. I consulted my inner soul. I consulted my inner mm -hmm. self. And the message that I got was, Queen Mother, you have a platform, use it. Ah, there you have it. The birth of Bonga Dada Bonga, which means speak, sister, speak. And, it's, and it is a platform for women to speak. And our first series is on Kenyan women in politics. And boy, oh boy, we have had a lot of the women coming on the show and speaking about what they are dealing with and the challenges that they are facing uh, as an aspirant, as well as other things. But over to you, our host. <laughs> well, speaking about women in politics, there have been quite a few aspirants who've been covered in Bonga dot Dada Bonga. And over mm -hmm. the past um, seven weeks, there have been very, very powerful conversations mm -hmm. that women have, have shared from the experiences, politicking, being on the ground when they are attacked. Unfortunately, being women, they are often perceived as being weaker and also softer targets for people who are up to no good. Political mm -hmm. bullying and, and actual physical bullying is a reality for women in the field of Kenyan politics which is an unfortunate event, but <clears throat> it is one that we cannot have a conversation about women in politics and not address. And it's been insightful listening to the insights that these women have, have shared. Um, mm -hmm. We have spoken, I mean, from my personal experience from last week's conversations with Frida and Umrah, just listening to the sacrifices that they've made because mm -hmm. politics is not easy. Moving aside from the bullying and, and, and the intimidation and the threat of violence, it's a very costly affair. Mm -hmm. Learning, to, listening to them talk about what it's cost them. Mm -hmm. You understand that for these ladies, it's not a means to an end because for many people, you look at politicians and think they make a lot of money, the salaries are great, they've got all kinds of benefits. But before you get there, there's also a sacrifice. There's so much that it will take from you, um, whether it's time spent with your family, whether it's um, being questioned about your decision. Are you the right person for it? But you're a woman, but maybe so somebody else would do so much better. And then of course, mm -hmm. um, voter, voter, there is no honey without money. When voters decide, <laughs> you are my paycheck, so you better mm -hmm. give me something so you can get my honey, which is my vote. Um, mm. The cost of governance, it, it's been really, I wish we would have these conversations happen exponentially on, on even broader platforms and wider networks, just so mm -hmm. that we can all understand it's not just a paycheck. These are mm -hmm. women who want to effect real change. Hmm. I will say, and, and this is my own analogy. Um, I haven't read this in any book, but in, in, my, in my way of thinking, yeah. stepping into politics is a calling. Mm -hmm. Just like being a minister of the gospel, regardless of your faith, it is a calling. Motherhood is also another kind of calling. Now, some of us get into motherhood perhaps not necessarily expecting it, but once you get in it, it's a calling. And it is not something that you take lightly, and it is not something that you take for a few weeks or a few months or a few years or you change it, just see in the business well, you can start a business. And if that business is not working out for you, you can choose to exit the business and choose to do something else. Usually not the case with politics. People really stick in it and stick with it uh, throughout their lives until of course they choose to retire. And even in retirement, they're called on to come back into the public's eye to give us words of wisdom pearls of wisdom, and even to host various shows and having them there because they've been there is a great way, I think, for our young aspirants coming up to have an opportunity to spend time with men and women aspirants 
who have in fact been elected officials in this country, as well as in other countries. We can learn from each other. Right. Speaking of learning from each other, Dr. King, uh, we were discussing this just a few minutes ago and we were, I, we were talking about motivating people to go to the polls. This is another historic election for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And it is one that's also marked by voter apathy. There are a lot of people that I engage with that say, you know what? I'm not voting. I'm sitting out this dance this year. I can't mm -hmm. choose between the left. I can't choose between the right. I, I don't mm -hmm. see an option that makes sense to me. There's mm -hmm. a lot of that. And if we think back to what the IEBC shared with us earlier in the year concerning the younger generation and mm -hmm. new voter registration, the numbers mm -hmm. are shockingly low. We all mm -hmm. expected Kenya to stand up and say, you know what, we're going to go and register. In fact, we're the ones <laughs> who are going to run and we're the ones who are going to run. But the numbers of the new registrations for voters amongst that age group is is, is really dismal. It, it could be a lot better than it is. In your experience, mobilizing groups, people groups, regardless mm -hmm. of the age, mm -hmm. what do we need to do as Kenyans to fire ourselves up? We can't register new voters now, yes, but there are those who are already registered who are still sitting on the fence and saying, I'm not going to do this. What would you say mm. to them to spur them to action and to just know that they still have a sense of duty to this nation and sitting on the fence not choosing to vote is not mm -hmm. necessarily the best interest of the nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I happen to be a person who is a Democrat uh, out of them. If someone is knocking at my door, they must know that if I don't answer it, there's some reason why I can't answer it. May I step away for a moment and do that? Yes. May I step away for a moment? Okay, let me do that. I'm not sure who that is, but let's just um, let's just make a point of going to that door right now. One moment. In the meantime, I'm taking a look at who's joining the conversation, and I can see Rose Maura. And you say, "Hey, Rose, first things first. Very good to see you um, this week, but we know that you were busy. Great to see you." And you say, "Politics, just like motherhood, is a calling." And you with Professor King, and truly that is the oh, truth. This is a calling. Yeah. Ladies that we bonga dada bonga over the past few weeks, the consensus is it is a calling. School in their own wakes up first in the morning and it's not to go for the different um, positions, we salute you. But we are inspired by all of you. Now, today's conversation is women in governance. You have to be women in governance. It is women in governance. It takes a lot when it comes to this, many times women's roles are used to let's go to the and are saying what next to me and let's see what we can do with that. How's that? I don't know what's going to happen here. See, that's like crazy. Where we can see our door. Can you begin to see themselves? Okay, I'm just saying that. There is no fault. And not just for a certain type of woman or a certain type of man. Whether you are living with a disability, whether you are Okay, Sheila. Okay, Queen Mother is back. And you know what? Thank you for allowing me to answer the door. Because guess who was at my door? Who? Yes. Let me scoot over and let you see.
who is here? I can't possibly guess. <laughs> oh my God. Is that Sylvia? Yes. Yes, she actually came here to be with me. I think she was closer to me than she may have been to her place. So oh, she's here. It Thank was, you. Sylvia, and I know my door was noisy. That's what happens. But our guest is here. I'm going yeah. to step over and okay. um, make sure that she gets in here real good. And you'll be hearing my voice. And I'm wondering if I could get on from my phone. I don't know. I normally go from the computer because it's so much better. So I'm going to scoot Wait. over and let okay. Sylvia come into the spotlight with you. And you know what to Wait. do from here, don't you? Okay. Awesome. Excellent. Um, oh, thank you so much, Dr. King. Dr. Isn't, King. She wonderful? Isn't she wonderful? Yes, she is. Yes, she thank is. Thank you, it's Rose. So you. I'm sure you have been running for Lisanna for yes. the rushing. It's wonderful to see you this evening. I have. I'm actually just coming back from the ground or the okay. grassroots, Wait, so to speak. I'm one of your constituents. So mm -hmm. I have mm. quite a few questions for you, but I am very pleased to be able to interact with you. <laughs> Thank you. Women in governance, the courage to stand. And just as you were making your way in, we were talking about why it takes so much, especially for women, to stand for a position, regardless yes. of whichever position. Because yeah. for starters, we are a patriarchal society. Yes. And the position of a woman, you know, it's always drummed into our heads, your position, mm -hmm. your position, position. But leadership is leadership. Leadership is meaning you stand up, you stand at the front, and you lead. And you get in there with your people, and you slog it out together. To make Absolutely. an impactful um, change for your society. Now you're running for MP in Westlands constituency. So that's yes. like one of your constituents. <laughs> Thank and you. The first, the first question that I have for you is, is this the first time that you're running for office? Yes, it is. It is my first time. Uh, it is it is actually my first time in political scene, not even just running for the seat, but to be in active politics. I've been in the corporate world uh, my entire life, uh, my career. And, uh, you know, it's uh, exhilarating to take a bold step to move mm. on to this other side of the coin. Okay, wow. and what over? Because... Corporate world is nice. There's benefits, there's perks, there's progressing in a certain way with your career. But then yes. you wake up one day and you say, eh, hey, Leo, tutakuwa mama na kazi. Kabisa? Basically, um, it was uh, a divine intervention, so to speak. And uh, uh, the COVID did a lot for so many people. Uh, it built some, it destroyed some, and it gave other people different career paths. And uh, I think I'm one of those because uh, when I was in my comfort zone during COVID, sitting there, everything was in place, uh, and we didn't have much to do other than take walks with the kids, I started finding ways of how I can also support in the community. And, um, you know, it, it came naturally. But then as during my work and experience and interactions, I realized that there were so much problems that needed fixing. And in my mind, I was like, no amount of, um, no amount of, uh, how to speak, uh, NGOs could actually resolve this. Uh, the NGOs will come in with different types of solutions, but it will not really amount to the impactful uh, solutions that the society needs, or rather my community in Westlands to be specific. And so it boils down to legislature, that are we really having the right people in government? Governance of a country is really key to put uh, an, even play, an, an even point to the entire running of the community, starting from the community, which is you know the county level mm -hmm. and going up to the national level. So for me, I started looking for how do I actually get myself into uh, a political party? Then I just joined a political party, it was a visit. And a couple of meetings later, they were all asking me to vie. 
And I thought, mm, maybe not. I didn't think about vying, but let me think about it. So three months, four months down the line, eventually I said, yes, I will run. So it's the grave problems that we have in our communities. And the problems have boiled down now to hunger. If we don't fix the mundane issues that we see on a daily basis, is what is culminating into crime because of hunger and you know um, a lot of uh, disgruntled uh, people, anger on the streets, doing things that you would never imagine people could do. Uh, it all boils down to where, who am I in this society? I don't have food on the table. Who can I turn to for help? Mm -hmm. Your member of parliament is nowhere to be seen. You are a member of county assembly is nowhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. They need accessible leaders. And I think I can just be able to, to provide that. And that's why, you know, I stepped forward. I said, well, I'll take the mile and walk it all the way and see what impact I bring in the place. It takes a lot of courage to see a yeah. problem and to yeah. say, I'm going to fix this. Before we talk mm -hmm. about what your family must have had to say, because I'm sure that was quite the conversation, not just your immediate mm -hmm. family, but your extended family as well. Uh -huh. Looking to engage politically, you don't find a lot of women in that train of thought. What was it like mm -hmm. seeking out these political parties, listening to the different ones and saying, this is the one that I want to settle. Did you do a, a round of, let me see what these people offer. Let me see what pushed you to do that? Because that really is quite, quite spectacular. <laughs> uh, actually, luckily for me, it was an easy decision to take because uh, uh, my younger brother has happened to be in ANC party for a long time, for over five years. And, uh, I knew that he didn't have challenges in the political party. And of course, I'd heard all these stories about political parties and how you have rightfully affiliated and sometimes how you have to step in certain places before you get to where you're going. And uh, fortunately for me, uh, I set foot in ANC and it's, you know, a straightforward party. The party leader is, you know, stringent. He does his job. And uh, when you come on board, they all welcome you. So it became an easier party actually for me mm -hmm. to join politics with. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I was well received. And so mm -hmm. uh, as a woman, the party also embraces women. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the last elections, they had just three nominations. And one of those people that was taken in nomination was actually a woman. Uh, she was nominated mm -hmm. senator. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't come with strings attached. As long as you are able to join the party, pay your membership fees, uh, be able to support the party with the different with their agenda, and be able to also represent the party, and that's what I was doing practically in the beginning before now stepping forward uh, to vie for the seat. And uh, uh, when it came to nominations, it was also a straightforward process. It wasn't. Uh, I've never bribed anybody, just if I can put it simply that way. Or I've never had to go into a private room to negotiate how I am going to be on this ticket and how I should do, you know, to, to be on this uh, ticket or to get favorism or anything like that. So I, I thank God for that. because That's why I said it is a divine intervention of, of, of some kind. And uh, I've had stories, yes, there are political parties that are really, really hard to join. And there are political parties which have given women a really, really tough time. There are cases where they've had to negotiate. Uh, they, there are cases where they have to negotiate, you know, their space. Uh, especially mm -hmm. during these primaries, we had a lot of women knocked out because of favoritism towards the male candidates as opposed to the female candidates. And especially the MP position is very, very competitive. Uh, it's very patriarchal in nature. And so you find women being knocked aside just because perhaps, you know, that they don't have a loud voice and all that sort of thing. So it worked out okay. And uh, here we are uh, just about five weeks to the ballot. And I'm Great. praying. Um, and, and I'd like to ask a question, yeah. if I may, Madam Host. What is the job of a MP? What 
does the MP actually do for its constituents? And what difference can an MP make in rules and regulations and policies and things of that sort? Okay, um, that's a very good question. And a lot of people actually don't understand what their MP stands for. Uh, the MP in your area is your representation in parliament, in the National Assembly, which is the assembly that makes laws, which is the assembly that sometimes nullifies laws, which is the assembly that uh, overrides executive orders sometimes. So basically this member of parliament, in my case, I'm supposed to clearly represent my people like what I'm talking about in the case of Westlands, there are challenges which have to do with school. Some of them have to do with the medical and some of them have to do with uh, employment. Mm -hmm. Some of them have to do with, um, you know, uh, mistreatment at work, uh -huh. which is the labor laws. So I, as a member of parliament, I'm supposed to make sure that the laws being implemented in parliament, they are passed down into the constituency that actually my people are feeling that the laws really favor them. And if these the laws are not covering them, then I, as their legislator, I'm supposed to go into parliament and put up a bill that will encompass a new law that will now make sure that my people get the services they need. And it's also supposed to uh, be an oversight the oversight meaning that we have a lot of uh, companies or other parastatals for the governments that sometimes do not deliver their uh, services. In the case of COVID, we had a big scandal with KEMSA. That is an area where members of parliament need to sit down and you know interview the perpetrators or whoever it is, if it's an organization, bring them to table, ask for accountability of what they are doing and you know make sure that those issues are rectified in favor of your constituents who are your community in my case my community of westlands these issues which run from roads being spoiled in case there's a road and people are having accidents continually in that place what am i supposed to be in, to do as an mp i'm supposed to represent it in parliament and i'm also supposed to get in touch with the people that are actually causing the problem so that is the work of a mem member of parliament. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't end there. Okay. A member of parliament in Kenya gets a budget. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of uh, Westlands, the member of parliament gets a budget of up to almost 150 million per calendar year, which part of it is supposed to go to bursaries for uh, children in school and universities, and part of it is supposed to be for community development. Mm -hmm. This community development is supposed to be for actually uh, women groups who are unemployed, make sure that the youth are actually in their rightful sports, okay. or they're also getting the college or the technical skills required so they can be able to get employment. I am also supposed to lobby for investors to come mm -hmm. into Westlands where we don't have enough employment to have more investors come into Westlands so that more people can be able to get jobs within these uh, uh, companies. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole framework of issues, but it boils down to the fact that the member of parliament needs to be accessible, mm -hmm. needs to be the ear between the community and the government. So if I'm inaccessible as a member of parliament, then I'm not doing any justice to my people. I am not doing any justice to you as Sheila. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm. Wow. Okay, so now we have a better understanding on the role of an MP. Mm. Huh, they really need women to be MPs. You know why? Because that's what mothers do. When they find a problem, they step in and they take care of it. So this is why it is so great at this particular season in history that women are, women are standing up, that women are being bold. Now, those of you listening to this broadcast today or who will check into Facebook or YouTube and hear it at a later date, you heard it first from Queen Mother. Get your ass out there and vote. Get your ass up and go vote. Why am I speaking to you that way? Because we've heard earlier from Sheila 
that a lot of young people are not in fact voting. So what are we going to do, do about that? I'm one of the people who believe in getting up into your face. Get up in your face and help get out the vote. As I was speaking to earlier, that one of the things that I do in America, I am a, a registered Democrat and I am an active Democrat abroad. And we spend hours on the phone calling people who live abroad in various countries in Africa, not just Kenya, about have you registered. We have data on when the votes go in. We have data on where you can get your, your ballot from. All right, and we get on the phone and we talk to them and see what issues are they dealing with to keep them from voting. And we work with them or send them to places in their particular city where they can get what they need. But everything is downloadable uh, online today. But I also know the power of being face to face. And that is what, um, and that is in fact what, what uh, she's been doing. Like she's saying, she's just coming from a, a round of work. And each time I speak to her, she's coming back from a round of work. And I have a couple of questions I ask her. A, are you eating? And B, are you getting sleep? So that she can have the energy, foods and energy. Those two things together will give her the energy to get up and get out every morning. So if she's willing to get up and get out every morning and stand as an MP in this Westlands area, my God, don't you want to just make sure you get your vote in? Or, uh, uh, how do people get ballots here in Kenya? I don't know. How do they get the ballots? Um, the, the, I mean, the, you don't get the ballots as such. It's all done by the independent electoral uh, board, uh, which is a whole commission. And so they're in the process of preparing. Uh, we finished our primaries. Then uh, we presented our paperwork to the independent electoral board, and they have now um, certified um, most of us mm -hmm. to vie, be on the ballot. And so now the paperwork is in print uh, somewhere in Dubai, and it will arrive here just a couple of weeks before the elections. And that way they disperse the um, uh, paperwork to the individual constituencies, down to the ward, to the polling centers. And then now people will just go and tick ah, on the ballot. You have the, okay. the sheet of okay. paper. In the yes. case of Westlands, I think we're about nine MPs, members of parliament. And I am number three on that. Uh, Sheila, I'm just letting you know. So, hey, <laughs> so hey, you hey. tick uh, the number three for Sylvia Mulama. And there I am, you <laughs> voted for me. Um, but most importantly is actually to vote for somebody that will solve your issues. Somebody that whose agenda is clear. Mm -hmm. uh, we have veterans in the field, as Sheila said earlier, the patriarchal society. Uh, they believe they don't have to say much, but they have big pockets. Mm -hmm. They can mm -hmm. dish money out there as much as possible so that people can vote mm -hmm. for the money as opposed to voting for the agenda. But we are coming in as women because we say, women, when we're in the corporate world, we work, we deliver. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it possible for our counterparts in governance, public office to deliver? Why has it become so difficult? When you are working, uh, particularly me being in marketing, the budget of a marketer is usually very minimal, but you're supposed to create a mountain out of the little budget mm. to make sure that you create three times the sales of your counterpart. Mm. So why is it impossible for a counterpart member of parliament to be able to deliver being given such a huge budget mm. in this case? And then it's not just the budget, it's also the access to the business community and access to the international community within the constituency of which Westlands hosts the highest uh, number of diplomats. It hosts the highest number mm -hmm. of non-governmental organizations. It also hosts the highest taxpayers in the country. Westlands right now is ranked as one of the top taxpayers in the country. We contribute 35% of tax to the national revenue. But half of the Westland people in the informal settlements are living under deplorable conditions. Mm. That's a question that the MP lead needs to, to look at critically, and that's where I come in. How do we rectify these minimal issues that cannot be fixed even with the budget? How can we provide a simple uh, skills college that is a, a right 
per, as per the constitu Constitution of Kenya 2010, every constituency is supposed to have at least one TVET college, which is free for its uh, constituents. Westlands doesn't have even a single one. Where is the money going? Where is it disappearing to? Mm -hmm. We have challenges with ki poor kids accessing good public schools because of transportation issues. Why can't we get transportation for these kids from the same budget allocated? There is issues with sports for the young people. And I have a, such a passion for young, talented people because I am one of those people that grew up talented and has thrived so well. Why can't we also give a chance to these young people? Mm -hmm. They don't even have football boots. Some of them would go to play away games in places like South B or Ruaraka, mm -hmm. and they come back walking halfway just so they can manage the little money they have to get home. This can be allocated in that budget of 150 ah, million. See, Where is it all disappearing to? Mm -hmm. We have schools that are not the main public schools, but they are community schools. Mm -hmm. And they're housing over 200 pupils in these schools. Mm -hmm. They are sitting about five of them on one desk. Their lunch is neglected. These little kids, they are looking up to becoming also leaders of this country. But if we are not providing equitable education to them as the rest of the kids, we are not doing justice to them. That community development fund can go into making sure that these other children also get the education required. So it's a whole spectrum of issues. When you look at it from the corporate side, it's governance issues. They can be resolved because there's a budget allocated. It needs a pragmatic person. It needs an honest person that is accountable and can be able to stay in my honest heart, I will perform for my people. I will deliver services to my people because they deserve it and because there's a budget for it. Okay. okay. Um, Sylvia, to just continue with this conversation, I take you back to something that you've mentioned, accountability. And, 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 and the questions that you've raised towards the use of CDF funds, for instance, and accountability. Yes. Not too long ago, yeah. um, the women's rep for Nairobi was over a deep sea. And a deep yes. sea, the women simply asked, what have you done? Show us what yes. you have yes. done. And yeah. it, it, it was yeah. quite a tense situation. Somebody took the key for the campaign truck and they had to get some help from the police so that they could be able to be escorted out. And that for mm. me spoke volumes. That if you as a leader are mm. asked to be accountable for your actions and you cannot say what you yes. have done, therein mm. lies the problem. There lies the problem. Yes. That what it is that pushed you to be able to get in this position you have not fulfilled. And mm. sadly, that is not just one person who has failed to be accountable, the lack of accountability runs across the country. The people in leadership who cannot be accountable. You have shared with us part of your vision and part of your passion and what it is that mm. you want to do for the people of Kenya. Let's talk about mm. accountability. How do we hold you accountable? Because you know, you've said people don't know their MCAs, people don't know their mm. MPs. Once they get mm -hmm. into that that's the end of that story. We'll see you again in mm -hmm. another five years where people will ask mm -hmm. you, nini, nini, kuja mm -hmm. ni nini mm -hmm. Will we wait for five years? How do we keep you accountable? Yeah, that's a very good question, um, Sheila. So when I look at the, uh, it's a very good defining moment actually in the Kenyan politics. I say so because of the constituents of Westlands. Uh, they come across as a very, very educated voter. And I appreciate that because they are ready to, you know, uh, sift good from the bad. Even if you bring the amount of money you think you're bringing, if Sylvia is able to reach as many people with her agenda as possible, she will still beat you down at the ballot. The question is now, it boils down to free and fair elections. 
accountability is key in this nation if we have to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. And we all need everybody to participate into this. There was a case of um, uh, interviews in Kileleshwa ward. They said they are going to interview their MCAs one to one, a panel of more than 20 people, because they hold your vote in Kileleshwa. And that was, of course, it's our neighboring uh, ward. And I thought it was a great idea because when everybody starts to take this ballot seriously, we are going to bring a change. We are going to start getting the people that do not perform out through the ballot because it's becoming tighter and tighter for anybody to steal the vote. There's nobody who can steal. If you get only 500 votes and your opponent gets 5,000 votes, there's no way you can try to steal 4,300 votes. You are out. So we need to hold our leaders accountable. Then it doesn't end there. It's a question also of you can impeach your mm. member of parliament. Once they're in for two years, they've promised, promised A, B, C, D. They are not doing it. What do you do? Come together, do a petition, take it to court, let the guy be kicked out. It is doable by law. Well, 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 well. It is doable. But, you know, we, we are too busy in our daily search in fulfilling our mandate as parents, as sisters, as daughters, as brothers, that all this gets long, along the way. Yes. Yeah. But if we have this mindset of this member of parliament is not going to, 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 to get away with this. We've seen uh, the cases of the UK. I can't even count which prime minister was before who. Because we had a flood of prime ministers, one coming and going. There was Theresa May, then there was Boris Johnson, then there was someone else. And now we, they have a prime minister. But they didn't get tired. Mm. Because you're not doing the right thing, they're asking you to resign. So I think as Kenyans, we also need to wake up and be alive to that fact. If we want to save our Kenya, and surely we are the place where we really have to save our country. We have to drive out people that believe that for me to become rich quickly, all I need to do is to get to be an MCA or to get to be a member of parliament or to get to be a governor. Right. Most people don't so, even want to go for Senate hmm. because Senate does not have a budget. So they are avoiding it. They would rather be an MP and kill each other at throat so that they can be able to control that CDF fund. Hmm. The CDF fund they are controlling is not going to the people it's going into their own personal pockets. Mm. And that is where now we say enough is enough. Okay. This evening, as Sylvia running for this yeah. position in yeah. Westland, if in two years you get that position and I feel you're not being yes. accountable yes. and not able to yes. you, if I mobilize in the Kubali Kwenda home. Yes, I promise you, Sheila, I will go home. Because that's the difference we want to bring in, especially as women moving from corporate mm. to a public office. Mm. I don't have anything else to prove other than performance. All right. The reason I'm coming into this is to prove that actually this thing can be done properly and it can be done to the benefit of the people. And we can actually fix our country. It doesn't have to be all bad. Politics can never be, cannot continuously be dirty in this country. For as long as we look at politics as dirty, we are letting other people run it down. We are letting people that we used to despise, sometimes in corridors, sometimes in corridors of offices, sometimes in corridors of schools, in campus, they are the ones who are running your office for you, running your constituency for you, with potholes, with no public toilets, with deplorable school conditions for children, with no amount of improvement from over five years in office, surely. If you do that in the corporate world, you are fired within the three months. Right. Very so I'm saying very we need to get more people and we need to encourage more people from the corporate world to move into public governance. Okay. And that way we'll start to see sanity. Yeah. I agree with you in having more corporate representation because you take the best practices out of corporate world 
and you bring them to the private sector and to the to the public sector to ensure that the ordinary one in Wananchi is also treated like somebody who matters because they absolutely all because of each other now you've yeah. made mention of the cdf funds and there are two things i'd like us to discuss heading in this mm. direction especially with cdf usage we mm. know it has been abused thoroughly in this nation and it has been yeah. used as a personal tool by many politicians as absolutely. kenyans we get to see the deplorable state of affairs in the education sector where the schools where we send our children because most of us end up voting in public schools i vote at high ridge primary school yes uh -huh. it is a school that i went to and when i was there as a student and what it is now today are two very different pieces two completely mm -hmm. different pieces and it breaks my heart the last election mm -hmm. we went in the use of cdf the paintwork was to mark the desks as given by an individual they do not they were not a present from an individual this is taxpayers yeah. money. this is yes. your money this is their yes. her money my money as a taxpayer mm -hmm. that has gone mm -hmm. to a kitty that has now been mm -hmm. given to this constituency and these mm -hmm. desks are around. why are we brandy yes it is good it, question it, why would we brand people's names yet they did not go into their pocket for that mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. number one going to mm -hmm. your manifest mm -hmm. one of the things you're very passionate about is healthcare. you mm -hmm. are keen on how is it westlands doesn't have when it comes to public hospitals there used to be a dispensary in high Ridge. i remember yeah. that dispensary because i used to be a little girl and we used to go there it was where that nakumat building now is now an yes. yeah. but the dispensary yeah. disappeared. Mm -hmm. What is it that you have in store for citizens of Westlands in terms of healthcare as per your mm -hmm. vision? And yeah. Vision yeah. Yeah. I'll answer the first question, which was about uh, the branding and naming and commissioning projects that rightfully belong to the taxpayer. Uh, it chance my tummy to see to see that and to hear of it because I am a taxpayer, an active taxpayer. And so I believe my taxes will be transformed into something else. When you look at developed nations uh, like uh, the case of Sweden where I happen to have lived for some time, mm -hmm. somebody pays taxes and they pay 45% in some cases and sometimes between 35 and 45% of taxes. It's very high. But you know what? They don't ask about the services because it's delivered to the top notch on a single day basis. And nobody comes to commission anything because they did it. And I want many Kenyans to feel the way you feel, that I paid taxes. This is my right. I own this. I deserve to have a good road. I deserve for my, ch my kid to go to a good school. I deserve for my kid to have a desk that is not written anybody's name because you paid the taxes. The money just passed through the member of parliament to get into the school. So why should it be labeled that somebody did it for you? They did not do it. They did not use their salary of 600,000 to buy those desks. Hell no. They used the money from the CDF, which is rightfully the taxpayer's money to improve the community and the facilities. property of the people of Kenya. If you brand it that it way, is. fine. You put exactly. It but don't go and possess it like you've done anybody a favor. No, you haven't. Yeah. The, 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 the second question yeah. was, hospitals. if you can just, the hospitals. So there's one hospital now that I know vividly uh, which is the Westlands by the Safarico, a dispensary. And this dispensary, I know it very well because I've had to use it once. I was living near there and there's one time I needed just to get into a dispensary and it was the nearest. Fantastic doctors. They do the whole thing, registration up to the tests, malaria test. Then after the treatment, they tell you, oh, that's where it ends. There is no medication. Oh, mm -hmm. and you go to the pharmacy, it's actually an empty hall with sh empty shelves. 
they don't have medicine. Okay, during COVID, most of them were furnished with drugs because of course, you know, they had to keep everybody at bay from the COVID. But now we are back to the state, uh, status quo. These dispensaries need to be actually taken care of. The mm -hmm. CDF funds and also the MP is supposed to be the connection between the hospitals and KEMSA and anybody else that makes sure that these dispensaries are actually working. And me, I actually, to, um, for my, uh, on my election, I actually plan to make sure that we actually get level three hospitals in every constituency, at least one in every constituency. Think you can get that land back and have a dispensary put up there? Which you Wh which one? The Nakumat one? The bridge, yeah. Yes, it is possible because now it's a question of who's hiding what. And that yes. is not the only land that has been taken over. There's a lot of land, government land. I was uh, on a tour uh, last week. I went to innocent farmers who are keeping the government land sane by making sure they cultivate crops, which is food, and they sell it back at the Kangemi market. These poor people, somebody decided that they want that land and came and put soil over their crops and just killed their trade just like that with no feelings at all. Those are some of the Kenyans we are talking about, inhumane, mm. I would say. That land, I keep saying, they better pray to God because when I'm elected, nobody's taking even a piece of it. It belongs to the government. And there's a lot of it like the one you just mentioned. There's more that have been taken by different people in their own personal possession and using it for their own private uh, ventures, even leasing it out to people. Yet it actually belongs to the government. So those are the hidden things that are not coming out to surface. Those are the hidden things that the MPs are not taking care of. Yet it is the work of a member of parliament because you are the voice. You can take it to the table in parliament and say, this land is here and I'm bringing it to the table here today. As a bill, I want that land given back to the people. They will listen to you. But if you sit in hiding and keep quiet, you are punishing your own people. You are earning a salary you do not deserve. You are spending CDF funds that you shouldn't even be touching a finger on. We need okay. to rectify our system. We need to get the right leadership into place. Okay. Thank you it so is much. Desperate. And so yeah. passionate about this and you're very clear about what it is that we can expect for you, from you. Mm -hmm. and I'm also quite thrilled about how you're telling us hold me to account hold me to yes. account if what i say yes. i'm going to do i do not do send me home because yes. i deserve to be there exactly and exactly. it takes exactly. courage to be able mm. to speak as you're speaking this evening and it takes mm. courage to be able to, to to voice what you're saying because there's going to be a lot of friction in that you will be going up against not just the patriarchy you'll also mm -hmm. be going against you know, there's this word that's always thrown around and I do not want to use it, but I cannot think of a better word, the cartels, you know? Uh -huh, or the system. Or, or the system. Or, you know, there's always an expression for it. But yes, it means yeah. you're going against the grain on many mm. issues, on, on mm. many fronts. And so that mm. takes a lot of courage. Mm. How do you stay connected and focused to what is at hand because it's not an easy task that's ahead of you how do you stay inspired how do you stay focused how do you still mm. stay sane despite this thing that you find yourself in yeah okay i i stay focused because of the people that i've interacted with the people that so want me to win this seat because of their lives and what they are looking forward at my leadership, in my leadership. I stay sane because I am a believer, I am a prayerful woman, and I know that if it's God's calling to serve his people, yes, I will serve and I will do it diligently without a shadow of a doubt. And I also stay sane because of my family, particularly my two children, 
when I come out and I'm all stressed out, there's one little one who will say, oh, mommy, you're the best mommy in the world. And I <laughs> laugh and I smile and it gives me peace. Mm. So that makes me wake up the next day and think, okay, it wasn't so bad yesterday. Today will be better. But most importantly, it's those men and women have looked into their eyes and seen the despair that we've caused our people. The despair to the point that some just don't even want to vote. They've given up on the life. They've given up on anything. It's the despair on a parent who can't even get access to school, and yet they've been denied the bursary. But you will hear the bursary has been given to someone else who does not deserve it. It is the despair of that young man who is talented, hoping to go to a college, but they can't afford it, hoping to be perfect in a specific spot, but there is no support for him. That actually keeps me born going. And when I think of losing, I think, no, I can't lose. What will they do? Because I, if I lose, I'm alone. I'll go back to my house and be with my family. But what about all these people that are putting their hope behind me, knowing that Sylvia, when elected, things are going to shine. Things are going to be better. They will not be perfect, but they're going to be better. That somebody finally will think about me as an individual in this Westlands and know that my life can be uplifted. We are talking about people that are sleeping hungry. We are talking about people that haven't worked since COVID started. We are talking about people that some of them, they are literally sitting outside the house, hoping to even just buy a leg. You know the chicken foot? Mm. The chicken feet, the price of chicken feet too is five shillings. Somebody just hopes they can be able to have five shillings to buy that chicken feet and find ugali and eat their supper. Mm. That is the Kenya we live in. That is the Westlands we live in right now. There are kids who are sitting in homes right now. They haven't gone to school because they don't have school fees. Yet there's bursary. How come those very needy children are lacking fees to go to school? So it's a whole, uh, you know, barrage of issues and problems that can be resolved with the right leadership. And I am offering myself. I will bring that leadership to the people of Westlands. You're right. That's it. Super. That, that's <laughs> I can't believe an hour is almost up. We've only got three minutes to, to, to wind up. And Sylvia, I'm so glad to have met you this evening and to listen to you speak. Um, you have encouraged everybody to participate. Mm -hmm. You've said anybody in corporate Kenya, please, Kujeni Hapa, the public sector needs you. Earlier yes. today, Igate was interviewed and he, he talked about um, his interaction with the late Chris Kirubi and the toilet mm -hmm. test which was taught. If you want to know how an organization is doing, go to the toilet that the staff uses, not mm -hmm. the toilet the guests go to the right. to know what kind of institution and what kind of people you're dealing with. And mm -hmm. so he got this says, he's come out here because he wants to do that toilet test to all of us. So when we see him, uh -huh. it's his own way of doing the toilet test. But listening to you, you're saying it's bigger than just a toilet test. It's saying, mm -hmm. talk to me. not just as corporate Kenya, you're now inspiring a generation of young girls, of, mm -hmm. of young people, are looking and thinking i want to do what sylvia is doing mm -hmm. i want i think a passion for what she's doing i want to go there what would you mm -hmm. say to encourage this young generation and those people who've been saying they don't want to vote what exactly. would you like to say to inspire the new generation and to just trigger someone who was sitting on the fence but now you want them to come and vote for you inspire us as we close so I just want to encourage young people, uh, they need to take active stage in the uh, center stage in our politics in Kenya, because it's been left to, uh, you know, the, el or the older generation. But, you know, we need to step out, because when we step out, especially the young people, you are telling people that, hey, my voice is here. I'm not a tomorrow's leader. I'm a leader of today. Uh, we need to get a parliament that has youngsters. 
because you cannot continually resolve problems of 27 year old when you are all of you are above 50 years old. It is almost impossible. So young people need to step up the, to the plate. They need to have their voices counted and the way their voices will be counted is when they participate actively in the politics. You know, like now I am, I have been waiting to hear of a group of university students calling people to interview them and say, hey, you know, you want to lead this area. So what are you bringing on the table? But we haven't had that. But I pray that in the future elections, we are going to have that very actively to the point that politicians will be so desperate not to look for votes just in the uh, informal settlements, but also to go to institutions mm -hmm. and look for votes. Mm -hmm. Make sure that their okay. entire campaign team is including not just people from their grassroots, but also from the uh, academic institutions so that we can balance the equation. And for the young ladies, it is our time. We are headed to having a woman president. Well, and we are not leaving it too far. Mm -hmm. It is our time to wake up in numbers, get time. to this other side of the coin. The corporate side is good. It's cushy. It has good salaries. It's got good benefits, especially travel. It comes with all the you know niceties Long and the frivolities. Years. But we need to move to this other side to see how we can fix our system so that wherever we are traveling to, we can travel here at home. Whichever nice hotels we are going to, we can have those hotels here in our homes. And that just means good leadership, good governance, and also active participation by all Kenyans. So I'm just inspiring them that me, I'm a woman, come and hold my hand as a woman. Make sure that you are counting on that woman next door to you. There's no more fighting between women. People used to say that the enemy of a woman is a woman. I don't want to believe that. And I've tried to negate that fact for a long time. All right, all right. That women, we can actually support each other. Yes, women, we can. we can actually stand with each other. Mm -hmm. And the day we put up a woman for president, we are more than 50%. We will win the vote. Yes, if will. every woman says, Mimi na leso ni mefunga, the other woman says, no, me, I'm wearing my tights. I'm up and running. The other one says, no, me, I'm putting on my boots. But a woman must get into power. We will get it. We will it get is it. our time. We didn't come short uh, changed. Uh, of course, it's been hard in the past, but I also give uh, 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 you know, uh, accolade to the women that have gone before us. Uh, you know, we see where Martha Karua is. She's not in my party, but I applaud her because now she's somewhere where women have not reached rightfully yes. in this space. So we are promoting all the women that let's keep pushing this. A woman presidency is in the offing. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Yeah. We will get there. Yeah. <laughs> Let me say to all the listeners tuning in today, thank you for tuning in to Bonga Dada Bonga. And we're so happy that the Honorable Sylvia Bulama has checked into Bonga Dada Bonga and she has poured out her heart to us. Sheila, we are, what can I say? We are just very happy to have you here as our host at this time. On next week, we will be having the illustrious Rose Amwara as the host of Bonga Dada Bonga. Her co-host will be a young lady. Ooh, let me see. I think I have her name written on a piece of paper over there. Mm -hmm. Who will be the co-host next year, Susan Carrigo. And we have a uh, Miss Catherine, who is a, a M, uh, MCA, who will be one of the guests for next week. I will say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a very difficult time to catch these women aspirants because they are on the move. You have to call them and call them and call them and call them and shake them and wake them. And they all want to be here, but their first obligation is to their constituents. So we have to be very careful and, and asking them to be with us. And we're so grateful when they take time for us because this is a platform created for women's voices. And the first voices we're having on Bonga Dada Bonga is the voice of Kenyan women in politics. We are making history. Listen, I come from the civil rights struggles in America. I know what making history is about. We are making history and we're very happy to be a part of it. And yes, the time is near for a woman to step into that seat. <laughs> the time is coming. 
Thank you again for tuning in. Sheila, you have some closing words? My closing words are, it takes courage to stand. So everybody stand, stand with the women who are running question interrogate sylvia i am here with you like this <laughs> thank, you, thank you thank you again Support and thank you all for tuning in to bonga dada bonga please turn tune in to us every thursday live at 7 p.m kenya time be sure to find out what time we're live in your city and we are bonga dada bonga bonga dada bonga Bonga, Dada, Bonga. <laughs>